Hi, this is uh, JC Rock and Metal Reviews. I have uh, my guest, uh, Brian from AYBL Maine, and we're doing a, another video. So this time we're talking about the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So this is a really great band, one of the band I've listened to uh, over the years. You know, I really love this band. So we're doing our top 10. So let's say, um, do you want to start, Brian? You know, yeah, I'll, start I think I'll ten? start just uh, yeah. this time. Uh, uh, with number 10, I went kind of old school. Yeah. I went with, uh, with, with fight like a brave, nice. yeah. uh, from their uplift, uh, mojo party plan. Yeah. I liked it because, uh, you know, I was kind of into hip hop in the eighties and stuff. And this was almost like rock rap to me. Yeah. I thought the style was really interesting. Even the way they brought it in, it sounded like, uh, uh, they were doing that. <laughs> and that was kind of like Grandmaster flash type yeah. of stuff that was done in hip hop. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting. I don't know whether they felt like they had to do a song like that when when, when Run DMC and Aerosmith did their kind of thing, and, and that uh, and that, or whether that was something they wanted to do all along. But uh, I I thought the song was really interesting, and it definitely I wanted to give some representation from their early stuff. So I put that at number ten. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's cool. Um, that probably was their. I think that's their fir- their third album, right? Third. Yeah, yeah. their third album. Yeah, yeah, like you were saying before we started recording that, yeah, it was a different type of band at that time. And yeah, they were more into like punk, rap, rock. And right, I, yeah. do have, I do have a, a few from uh, that period. But my number 10 is going to be something from their latest album, The Getaway, and it's called Detroit. And, you know, that this was a song that kind of like stood out you know, for me when I listened to this album, you know, this wasn't an album I've listened to that much, but it's pretty cool. It just has like this like funky riff and really cool bass line. And he's, they're singing about Detroit, you know, the, the, this is a band they're always singing about California and, yeah. they, <laughs> and they decided to uh, choose a different city, which was cool. And, you know, I, I'm a big Alice Cooper fan. I think but I'm probably a little disappointed that they didn't mention him, but they do mention like Ted Nugent and they mentioned the Stooges. So I think it's just a pretty cool, it's just a, a fun rock song. So yeah. I wanted to represent some of their like newer stuff. So that's my number 10. <laughs> didn't, da- didn't Danger Mouse uh, produce that album? I think that's the only, uh, I, I, they finally broke with Rick Rubin on that that last album, I thought anyway. Um, it, 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 it could be. Yeah, yeah. They, they probably did. I know uh, they, they did some with Rick Rubin uh, about yeah. prior to that. Right. But, um, Cool. Yeah, I think that the album from 2011 was Rick Rubin, right? But anyway, so that's cool. Um, oh, okay, so all right. More, so more nine. Number nine for me, I had the title track from uh, their By The Way uh, album. I uh, This was a, to me, it, it felt like it was uh, just a continuation of the California uh, Californication type narrative. Yeah. Because it still had uh, a mention of this Danny individual that that they were talking about yeah like the danny california yeah yeah danny california and then she was mentioned she wasn't mentioned by name in this song but then like in californication there was a mention of that as well so i felt like there was this theme going on where he was kind of talking about the same girls uh I, you know i i i like this one because it it kind of mixed uh uh it kind of mixed the old red hot chili peppers because there's some wild moments in the song yeah but there's also the melodic moments in the song that you had from their latter material, you know, and I thought that unique blend, I thought it was interesting that they chose this track to be the lead off track from there. And I think that maybe that had a lot to do with it. It was a little bit of who they were and a little bit who have, they are now. So it was, it was really good. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool, uh, th- that is, that was a, a good, I like um, Californication. That, that's like probably one of their best albums. It might be my favorite. And that's sec- like the next album, it was okay, maybe not as good as, as Californication, but that is like one of the better songs. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, my number nine is uh, called She Looks to Me by Stadium Arcadium. Now that's an album I like a lot. And this one came out in 2006, a double album, so it's a long album. Yeah. And this, this song, uh, it reminds me a little bit of like Radiohead. And I remember we, I'm listening to this and kind of like, it's kind of reminds me a little of Radiohead. It has the like '90s like alternative rock sound, and they do incorporate some of those like different like uh, electronic sounds into it. And a really good song. I really like like the vocals on it, and um, they have like backing vocals. 
And it's just a um, kind of different kind of sound, sounding uh, song and just one I like. So that's my number nine. No, that's good. That's a good yeah. pick. All right. Okay. Uh, number eight for me, I had uh, The Other Side uh, uh, from nice. Californication. It's probably, when you, I'm looking back on it, between Blood Sugar and Sex Magic and this one. And I was going to be a toss up about which one I actually liked the best. But I yeah. like this song. I think they were talking, I like the lyrics to it because they were talking about a lost bandmate that they had lost to an yeah. overdose in the past. And, uh, and like some re reconciliation that they finally had to deal with about what uh, California, I won't say California in general, but that California scene can do to individuals and how it can change people and how it can hurt lives and, and things like that. And they're going to address that much more in some other material we might discuss here. But uh, I thought it was a very sincere song and it was, a, it was nice. It had the same melodic tone that I enjoy with them yeah. where they kind of have a slow build going toward a, a high, higher crescendo in the song, which yeah. I always like about them. So it, it was a good song. Very well, well written. Well, well written. Yeah. That, that, that's a good song. I mean, that, that um, Californication, that's a, a really great album. I, I, I probably like, could have made my entire list from that album. Almost. You know, that is one <laughs> of my favorites. Um, okay. So we're on uh, number eight. Yes. So I have another one from stadium Arcadium called uh, Danny California. And again, you just, you mentioned that, and I think you mentioned a different album, but this song was from uh, Stadium Arcadium. And this is a, a really cool, I really like, like the drums in the intro, they, you know, pretty cool. And this is kind of like another one of like, like a rap rock songs. They kind of did that a lot, you know, kind of like they did that a lot in the beginning, but you know, I like that a lot. And it's pretty cool, you know, I like the lyrics, you know, they talk about the, the character Dan in California, but they do kind of like mention like different states. I thought that was pretty cool. You know, there are some kind of heavy guitars in it as well in the chorus, that was pretty cool. And yeah, you know, it's just a really good catchy song. So that's my uh, number eight, yeah. That's a good pick. Yeah. Oh, number seven for me, I'm going back a little further. I'm going back to their cover of Stevie Wonder's Higher Ground. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, I mean, as a, as a young person in the late 90s, I mean, when you, when you first hear this, it took me a moment to even realize that that, <laughs> that was a cover song, you yeah. know, because it just didn't sound mostly anything like anything that Stevie had done. But I thought it was just a, a nice uh, way, to, way to make a song your own. If you're going to cover a song, you, you know, I, the ones who cover it down the line, sometimes that's okay. But I like the guys who say, no, we're going to take this song and we're going to make it our own. And it's going to yeah. have our sound to it. And uh, it really works. I mean, it's got this really, uh, you know, this really thrashy uh, type of sound to it. You know, I mean, yeah. Flea, is, Flea is just going off on the bass on this song. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, it's a great song. I mean, I can listen to it all the time. I, I, I don't mind it at all. So Higher Ground made it for me. Yeah, High Ground. That was from uh, Mother's Milk, right? Yep. Yeah, that's also one like one of my top albums. Yeah. Like out of, out of the... Mother, mother's milk um, and blood sugar and californication like th those would be contenders for my top okay so that one i like i do have a, a couple from that uh on this list but my number seven is uh from californication and it's called easily and this is probably one of the lesser known songs from that album because that album was pretty much filled with hits but i just really like it's just like a fast-paced kind of like a rock song and really great vocals you know he, um he kind of like has like the, the lower smooth vocals and then he, he kind of like more of like like the harder vocals i really like it and it's just such a catchy song really catchy melody and i really like the guitar solo on this one so again this is one of the lesser known songs from california oh, I have to, yeah i don't remember listening to that one when easily I have yeah. to go back to it again you know yeah. it's it's funny like that i like it when people mention a song that maybe didn't resonate with me on a first listen and I'll need to go back to it a little bit and see. Yeah, that's like. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay, where are we at? We at number six now, right? Yeah. Okay, we're at number six. Uh, I know a lot of people would have this song higher, and I know that it's it's very maybe his most sincere song. I've got "Under the Bridge" from R uh, Blood Sugar Sex Magic here. Yeah. Uh, probably their most well known song, uh, especially for the <laughs> music video where Anthony Kiedis is just basically running down the street. Yeah, uh, with no shirt on. I'm sure the ladies love that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's probably his most sincere song. And it yeah. started that trend of songs where there's a slow uh, melodic build 
to the song. Yeah. High crescendo of a blend of their type of rock and punk and proto punk type of sound that they yeah. have. I like the slow build of the song and it ends up being like a, a theme that they use later in songs that works for them. I mean, yeah. obviously people like that because people kept going back to that and they kept going back to it in their material. So yeah, <laughs> uh, I, have under, I have under the bridge here. Okay, that, that's funny because um, we actually uh, had a match. <laughs> my, my number six is uh, under the bridge again. And like you said, I, I, I could have put it higher, but it is their their biggest hit. And I, I like it a lot. It was, and I, I like it, I think, just because of the guitar intro. I mean, everything you said, but as well as the guitar intro, it just this really like melodic, you know, that they played, I think it's like the E chord and it just does like put so much melody into just that like one chord and really uh, like that. It's just a really great song. You know, like I said, the music video was great, you know, and, and just a very memorable song. I really like the lyrics, you know, like talking about like Los Angeles. And, okay. So, yeah, like I said, it's just like one of the best songs and that's probably why it's their biggest hit. So, yeah, it's my number six. Yeah. That's your number six. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Now we're in the top five already. Wow. Yeah. Uh, for me, I put at number five, I've got Californication. Oh. Uh, I really like uh, not just the music, but the lyrics of this is really, uh, it's got some really interesting stuff going on where they talk about just how bad and, 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 and poisonous the California scene is. Yeah. They make references to like, uh, Star Wars equivalencies and stuff like that and talk about uh, how young people will young people will go there and end up doing uh, things like soft porn get into that yeah. and think they're going to make it big into the scene uh, so he kind of addresses that all 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 in that song uh, basically uh, you know it, it, it's a condemnation of that that particular poisonous lifestyle that California can bring and yeah. uh, <laughs> and for every success story like him there's probably going to be 20 people that absolutely get destroyed by the industry in some way, you know, yeah. whether it be music or film industry or whatever. And there's a lot of talk about that. And it's just, you know, it's one of those mentions of this Danny character, you know, oh. that he said is just a personification of a yeah. lot of people in his lives that he has seen bad things happen to because of this type of scene. Yeah. It's a great song. I think one of the most well-written songs that he had. So, yeah. That that one I, I I like a lot. You know, like I said, that album was so great. You know, like I probably could could have picked like almost any song. That one I didn't have on my list, but I do like that one a lot. So um, we're on our number five. My number five is my friends from One Hot Minute. So th this album, it, it, this was the one that came out after Blood Sugar Sex Magic. It's probably like not as good, but it does have a few like really good songs on it. It does. And this is probably like my favorite song from One Hot Minute. It just really like the acoustic intro. It just, you know, I really like the, the vocals and it's just a really nice like acoustic rock song. It's just very a melodic song. Just one of those like memorable songs. And it, it just, um, you know, sometimes I, I, I like, you, you kind of forget it's from this album. Sometimes you think it's from that uh, Blood Sugar Sex Magic album. It's kind of like would have yeah. fit like perfectly in on that album as well so that's it that's my number five yeah that's good all right so i'm going to keep with the california theme and at number four i've got danny california i mean i know you've already touched upon yeah i mentioned that on that number yeah two. you know where it's got a kind of uh, that unique blend of uh not not pure rock not, not pure rap but there is like this uh spoken word rhythmically yeah. spoken word type of style to it yeah that i really liked and i like this i like this repeating theme and I really, I mean, Stadium Arcadium is a big album to kind of digest, you know, so you're trying to go through it and, 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 and pick out some gems and stuff. But this, this clearly to me was the standout track in there. Yeah. I really, I really enjoyed the track. So I had it at number four. Yeah, definitely. That's a, a great song. Stadium Arcadium, it's a, a really good album for a double album. You know, there's not, I mean, there are a lot of good songs. But there's not like that much filler on it, you know. Right. That was a very strong album. Okay. So my number four is um, a deeper cut from uh, Blood Sugar and called I Could Have Lied. Now, really, I like it. It's just, it's just a very like minimalistic, simple song, acoustic intro, and it just played on the acoustic guitar. And it just, a, it's a very like personal song. Now, 
he's, he's basically like, I kind of like had to like research this a little bit. And it was basically about him being dumped by uh, Sinead O'Connor who they were dating at the time. And basically the, the song, it, it's about, um, you know, he's thinking that he was cheating and then maybe like if he, maybe he would have uh, gotten away with it. And, you know, let me also say that I don't condone this behavior as a married man. <laughs> 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 and let me just say that for the record, but <laughs> um, yeah, it's just a very personal song that, uh, that, you know, like maybe he could have gotten away with it, which he probably wouldn't have because you usually don't in the end. But it, uh, I like it because of the lyrics, and I do like it. Just it's just a very laid back, you know, minimalistic, uh, you know, acoustic song. And I like I like that one a lot. Good. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> hey, that's ironic because at number three, I've got "I Could Have Lied" from Blood Sugar Sex Magic. I oh, thought cool. I thought that this song, I don't know, Blood Sugar Sex Magic to me sounded so unique to anything that was out at the time yeah to me anyway and i could have lied was like this really as close to blues as i think that they have gotten as far as just a track that could be a pure blues track yeah uh, especially for the subject matter and then the style that they played it but you're right i mean i kind of had to research it a little bit too going okay what's he talking about here and uh yeah he's uh, basically saying hey listen you know i could have uh i could have uh omitted this information and never told you about it and we would have been okay <laughs> and stayed together as a couple or you know but this is what i get for telling the truth type of scenario you know yeah so it's kind of a uh, unapologetic in a way but uh <laughs> but that's kind of like the bluesy way of, of doing things right i mean you get out there and you talk about how woe is me but at yeah. the same time most blues guys don't apologize for the things that they've done <laughs> they just kind of say well this is what i'm living with right now so yeah but yeah, I think it's, it's it's most unique track on there. It's got that bluesy sound that I really enjoyed. So I put it at number three. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, a, that's cool that you have that on there. Okay, so um, I'm on my number three now. So my number three is is from uh, Mother's Milk, Knock Me Down. And this is just really, it's kind of like, I guess you could say their heaviest. Uh, I know they're not a metal band, but it's just fast paced. It's just really... Really great bass playing, a flea's bass. He just kind of like goes crazy in the song, and I really like the like the lyrics. Now, they are kind of open to interpretation. They, they could be about um, doing drugs, or it could be about just like you were saying before, just like when you get a lot of fame and it kind of goes to your head. Just uh, you know, if kind of like if you see me getting high, knock me down. You know, there's two different ways to interpret that, I guess. But it's just such a great song. It's just very, it's just a fast paced to heavy song. And this is a, one of my favorite albums from them. So that's my three. Yeah, that's my number three. Nice. Yeah. That's number three. All right. All right. We're down here to number two. Number two. Number two for me is My Friends from One Hot Minute. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. yeah, I really, you know, I like this because like the chorus, the, the title doesn't appear in the chorus, but it, <laughs> it, it, it appears in every stanza. So it's like that yeah. repeating thing of my friends, my friends feel, my friends are so depressed, blah, blah. Yeah, it's you know, cool. It's always that, the, the title of the track shows up in every in every stanza, but doesn't show up in the chorus because it ends up being something totally different. Um, but it, it seemed like it's a very personal thing uh, to him. And it's coming right off uh, Red, uh, Red Blood Sugar Sex Magic, which I, I, like you said, I thought it could have fit right on that album. Yeah. You could have slid, slid that song right on the tail end of that album and nobody would have said anything had the same feel and maybe that's because rick rubin produced both albums yeah uh, and i'm not sure how close together the the recording sessions occurred maybe they were closer than we think but it, it felt like there was two or three years between there but uh, no I no mean, there, was, there was it was i think 91 to 95 yeah so, there yeah, was, so that's that's, that's a big of, gap kind of i don't gap, know whether yeah. it was a leftover song or something that, i mean I could have been yeah it could have been um, but uh, definitely had that same sound that the stripped back sound that Rick Rubin is notorious for trying to get out of his artists. So yeah, I really liked it. I put it at number two. Okay, cool. My number two, um, I don't think you mentioned this, uh, Scar Tissue from Californication. Oh, wow. And uh, this is a, just this album, so many good songs, but, you know, I think that this was uh, one of those songs that did uh, touch on that topic of, uh, you know, I think that it is open to interpretation again. It could be about drugs, but it also could be about, you know, like a, a particular breakup or, but it is just so melodic. Just, I really like the, the guitar, just the different runs on the guitar. And 
it's just well, one of the songs that always like stood out. I really like the guitar solo. It's kind of the, it's not like super technical solo, it's just a very melodic guitar yeah. solo. And that one I, I like a lot. So that's why I have that at my number two. Yeah. Good. All right, yeah, yeah. so we're at number one. Yep. This is RK. So this one has a lot to unpack here. I mean, even though it's a wildly popular song, um, it's uh, I'll premise the whole thing with saying this. You know you've made it when Weird Al makes fun of you, right? Yeah. I mean, so it's, that's how you know you've made it as an artist. Is Weird Al will do a parody of your song. Uh, so I have I have Give It Away. At, give It Away yeah. from uh, Blood Sugar Sex yeah. Magic. I think it is... When I listen to it, and I've listened to it a lot this week because we're kind of unpacking these songs, yeah. I think it's some of Flea's strongest bass work that I've heard in there. And and the extra instruments that they use in there are just crazy. They're using a Hammond organ in that song, and they're using what's called it's like a little pick called a Jew's harp that they're okay. plucking that they're plucking as they're as they're as they're making the song. And then yeah. there's parts in it too where it's a little funky and they're like backward masking the music a little bit you can hear oh, yeah, the background yeah. where they're kind of like backing the music up a little bit and laying that over top of the song again uh that, that there's so, so much going on in that song it's if you unpack it musically even without the lyrics it would be an interesting song if that was just a musical on the album i thought i would have had it still in my top 10 probably but now you throw the lyrics in there and uh it becomes this really huge entity yeah and maybe their second most famous song ever, I, I, I would imagine. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I'd have to guess. But so I have Give It Away at number one. Yeah, uh, that's a good song. Actually, uh, I, I like that song a lot. But like I said, Blood Sugar, Sex Magic, that's such a, a great album. But I remember, I think that was their uh, the lead single because I do remember that was like the first song I heard from that album. And I do remember, uh, you know, that was like one of the reasons I bought this album. I probably could have had that on my list. But yeah, like I said, I really like that. Uh, I guess it's called the back masking, right? When they come yeah. like play in reverse. Yeah, that was yeah. like really cool. Okay, so my number one is going to be a little different, but called Nobody Weird Like Me um, from Mother's Milk. Wow. And it just really like just the instrumentation, the, the, the bass intro kind of flea is kind of like just going crazy on it. And I guess, you know, this is kind of like, I was talking about how like this album, they're kind of like a little, a little faster, kind of like a little heavier, like I said, a little faster pace, a lot of energy in it. And it's almost like a punk rock song, but then it gets slow. And the, the lyrics are very weird. Like I tried to read it and interpret it. It's kind of like hard to see what they're talking about. It's kind of, it's really not easy to make sense of lyrics, but it's just such an energetic song with really great bass and the guitars are really heavy. And I think that's why I, I like this one a lot, you know, just a very like energetic song. So that's okay. it. So that's my uh, number one. I definitely got to go back and listen to Mother's Milk a little bit more then. Yeah. Because a lot, I think three, three, of the, you had three tracks off of Mother's Milk on your track. Um, I Is think I, I had Nobody Wear Like Me. I had Knock Me Down. Did I have another one? No, I think I had I had two, but I had two up very high. No, yeah. Mother's Milk, that was my, my first uh, introduction to, to the band. And it's just very different. Like, it was different. Like, there's no other bands. Like, I had never heard any other band like this. Like, and I couldn't, you can't really, like, fit them into some, like, kind of, like, specific, like, genre. It's kind of very, uh, it's very kind of. about the, how watered down, uh, radio was in 1989 when it came out yeah. I mean, 19, 1989 i mean we were, we were stuck with this pop rap stuff yeah and you were you were stuck with this um a lot a lot of watered down r&b artists and stuff so it's yeah. like for <laughs> something like mother's milk to come out it would be highly refreshing yeah. for a person who liked rock music you know what i mean yeah and i, I was in and th that time in the late 80s i was listening to a lot of like heavy metal. I was really into like metal at that time. It wasn't until like the early nineties, I got into grunge alternative and started listening to different stuff. But, you know, this is like probably like one of my only like non metal albums that I was listening to at that time. And it's just a really good one because it just had enough like speed and energy and just like that, like heavy, like Flea's bass. He's like probably like one of the best uh, bassists of, I, got, I, like I would say top, I say top five. You think, yeah, top five. That's, that's me, you know. Yeah. You know. But uh, that, that's why that, that Mother's Milk album I really like a lot. So that's why 
I had to have uh, that as my number one. So now, does Flea play like a six string bass? Is it a six string bass? It's not a regular four string bass, is it? Um, I, I, I didn't look at him play a little bit more. I, I don't, like I don't know, but he he has that different like. He has a different style, like, um, yeah. you know, he's just not a normal bass player. He, he does like he a slap can, he, bass. He does and, much I mean, more rhythmic rhythmic and melodic stuff with a bass than most people do. I, I mean, mean, he's, yeah, I mean, but he, he, he you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of bass players, you know, they, they just play basic bass, bass right. lines, but he does solos and he does like a lot of different stuff and he changes the sound. And I mean, he's like really good. So that's why. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he was probably like he was probably like the reason the band is so big, you know. Yeah, you can even argue that. So cool, perfect. So that's it. Um, we'll have to uh, come up with another list uh, for an, for another video uh, pretty soon. So yeah, I think it's your turn. Why don't you once you pick a band, I'll I'll research them. You know. Okay, cool. So, so I'll I'll think of a band in it. Uh, I think it's your uh, turn. I think I did. I think I mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll think yeah, of a band and I'll, I'll send you some and then we'll uh, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good, John. Okay. So okay. So everybody watching. Uh, thanks for uh, watching the whole thing. Uh, please subscribe to Brian. I'll put his link in uh, my video description. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. So see you later. Let me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't...